Hello, my dear subscribers. I'm pleased to welcome you to my YouTube channel dedicated to author stories. Enjoy listening. You need a wife, sighed Mrs. Adelaide, watching Alex awkwardly dress his son, Tyler. A woman. I wonder what kind of woman would want me with such baggage, Alex repeated. What kind of baggage, interjected Mr. Jackson, the father who also came to see off his son and grandson. You speak as if Tyler is some shameful burden. Not shameful, but a burden, Alex thought bitterly. He has a child, exclaimed the girls and women in search when they find out that the object of their passion, and possibly even love, has a child. And yet, it seems that, or not, the man is quite likable, and there is even some mutual attraction. But he's a single father. That's the exact problem Veronica encountered. Is it really a problem for you personally? Just so you know, I myself have a child, and not for marriage. Who knows what happened in this man's life? But you, from the start, are a single mother. Do you want to hear the words of your potential mother-in-law, or even the friends of the groom? It's still unknown who she slept around with. Anna, Veronica's friend, snorted. Well, then keep searching for candidates for your generous hand and kind heart. But I must say, your personality, excuse my bluntness, is not exactly sugary. For six months, Veronica had been sitting on dating sites hoping to find her soulmate. The worst part was that most of the single mothers like her had already found their happiness a long time ago. And yes, they were truly happy. But what was wrong with her? Nika's a young and very beautiful woman with expressive noble facial features. It just so happened that by the age of 33, she still couldn't find her happiness. The attractive green-eyed brunette with seductive curves had her fair share of adventures in her time. Veronica changed boyfriends like gloves. When she got pregnant, the biological father suggested that Veronica herself didn't know who she had given birth to. Many, especially Veronica herself, were convinced. No, that's not the issue. In the village where she lived, Veronica wasn't the only one like that. Remember the saying about not missing out on your happiness? That's the thing. No, many men are deterred by that. But there are also simple guys who are attracted to the charms and solid experience and are willing to overlook the past. After all, even prostitutes successfully get married and become respectable mothers of families. However, Veronica just had chronic bad luck. Some men offered her occasional pleasant company, others often wrote that they would like to raise their own children, and others didn't even know what they wanted. Veronica wanted to give up on these searches and continue enjoying her freedom and passionate affairs. Sex for the sake of pleasure without any obligations was not bad either. But the thing is, she's not getting any younger while younger girls are growing up and blossoming. And then, on a beautiful day, Veronica received an email, Alex is interested in you. The girl, who was ready to settle down, logged into the website and started reading messages from the potential husband candidate. Alex wrote that he was struck by Veronica's beauty and he would like to get to know her better. By the way, the man lived in a city just 20 kilometers away from their village. And everything would have been fine, but Alex was a single father. Well, at least he didn't hide it, thought Veronica and also wrote that she had a six-year-old son. The potential groom's response was overwhelming. Well, that's great. Two boys are better than one, right? By the way, my Tyler is four years old so our boys can become friends. Well, what's wrong with that? You have a son, he has a son, and maybe you'll have another little one together. A sweet little daughter, huh? Yes, there are so many stories on the internet about relationships not working out with the husband's children from the first marriage. It makes me uneasy. Believe less in what's written on the internet. There are things written on fences too. So what? You see, Anna, I'm looking for support, including financial support. Well, I'm tired of raising my son alone. And here I am, raising someone else's child, dear Veronica. Quite a situation. After all, a child is not a glove you can shake off or put in your pocket. You're an interesting one. So, he should sleep and dream of how to support you and also take care of your son. And all you have to do is sit on his strong masculine shoulders and ride along? No, sweetheart, you want too much. Anna waved her hands. Marriage with a single father is not the worst option, I'll tell you. Although there are many pitfalls, you'll become a real mother to his child, and he'll become a father to yours. Once upon a time, 
Veronica was convinced that the Lord had prepared the best fate for her. But that was until she felt the need to jump on the last car of a departing train. A year ago, Veronica believed that her train had not yet arrived. She just had to wait. But Veronica's train was not in a hurry, so she decided to register on a dating site. And she found someone who caught her eye. So, maybe this Alex is really her chance for a new happy life? And Veronica agreed to meet him. She was confident in herself. She could charm men in no time. The only problem was that no one stayed by her side for long because they quickly realized who she truly was. No matter how much her friends scolded her and said she kept everything to herself or rehearsed before the meetings, nothing helped. Moreover, Veronica sincerely didn't understand what she was doing wrong. Alex became a widower three years ago. When his beloved Maria was diagnosed with an incurable disease, there was nothing they could do. They could only wait, wait for the end. And when it came, Alex seemed to lose a part of himself. And no wonder, he and Maria were a complete whole. After the departure of his beloved wife, Alex couldn't recover for a whole year. But he had a very young son, and he had to live for him. Thanks to his parents who helped Alex raise the boy. Mrs. Adelaide cooked meals for Tyler, took care of him while Alex was at work or when he was sick. Mr. Jackson was responsible for spending leisure time with his son. The loving grandfather took Tyler for walks in the park in his stroller. And when the little one grew up, they went to the circus for safe rides and other places that children love. Sometimes Alex's sister Inna would pitch in, but she had her own family. The first year was incredibly difficult for everyone. Tyler was constantly being fussy, waiting for his mom. The child would wake up in the middle of the night and call for her. It wasn't easy for Alex either, but when he saw Tyler's suffering, his heart ached with pain and compassion. The child needs a mother, sighed Mrs. Adelaide. You work too much and your father and I are not young anymore. What if something happens to us? Yeah, you're quite a handful, Alex laughed. If I'm serious, Alex, you need to get married. Maria can't come back and you're still young. There's no one like Maria, Alex replied. Of course not. Each person is unique. But Alex didn't want to hear anything about another woman. He sincerely believed that entering into a new marriage would be a betrayal of Maria's memory. But as people say, grief lasts three years. Now he himself began to think about his personal life. After all, he wasn't a monk. The question was, how to start? How to take that step? Moreover, he understood perfectly well that he needed not just any woman, but a woman who would treat his son well. Combining love for him and love for someone else's child was not something everyone could do. Alex was a fairly attractive man with an athletic build. In his youth, he regularly visited the gym and jogged in the park. Yes, he still did his morning exercises. He wasn't wealthy, but he wasn't destitute either. Alex worked as a design engineer. However, lately, he had been thinking more and more about starting his own business such as an auto repair shop or a home renovation service. Overall, not a bad choice for a groom. However, the truth was evident. None of the young women he knew were enticed by the prospect of raising someone else's child. Even if the woman herself was a single mother, why don't you post a personal ad on a dating site? There are plenty of desperate people there. I'm sure you'll find what you're looking for, suggested his sister. Honestly, Alex was skeptical, but deep down, in the most secret corner of his soul. Hope flickered. What if? Especially since his sister told him about being invited to a wedding of a colleague who found her second half there. You know, he's such a serious, good man. And he stumbled upon the dating site. You could say, by accident, someone advised him. Look, I'm sure it will work out for you too. You're quite a catch. At first, it was the same as offline. But in the end, he was drawn to a very beautiful woman named Veronica with dark hair and green eyes. She even resembled Maria a bit, except Maria's eyes were golden brown. They exchanged words, and two solitudes swapped contacts. It turned out Veronica was also a single mother. They often chatted in the evenings, about everything and nothing, as if feeling each other out. It seemed that Veronica, like himself, was trying to figure out if this was the right person. Yes. They developed a mutual liking, but that alone wasn't enough. However, the meeting took place. So, you found your prince? Mom asked, glancing at Veronica over her glasses with a hint of mockery. Maybe, 
shrugged the daughter. Prince or not, he's a very good option. If it weren't for this child, he would be perfect. The main thing is that he doesn't find out about your tricks, Mrs. Marina said with the same mocking tone. Yeah, what tricks, mom? exclaimed Veronica. Well, your escapades, replied her mother with a sigh. First of all, I'm a free adult woman. That means I can do whatever I want. Secondly, he won't find out anything unless I tell him myself. And I won't tell him because it's not beneficial for you either. But there's also a third point. I'm curious, what is it? Mrs. Marina sarcastically asked. Well, remember Jessica? She used to have quite the reputation, never missed an opportunity, neither walking nor riding. And what happened in the end? Now she acts all righteous and proper. You're right about that. So go ahead and be bold. What mother doesn't wish happiness for her child? Mrs. Marina hoped dearly that her daughter would find her sanctuary, that she would settle down, become a good mother and wife. Then she would feel much more at ease, knowing Veronica was being taken care of. A week after that conversation, Veronica traveled to a neighboring city. She expressed her desire to go there, justifying her decision by needing a change of scenery. Veronica got off the bus and immediately spotted a blonde man, around 35 years old, with an athletic build. He's even more attractive in person than in the photo, she happily thought. The handsome man held a bouquet of tea roses and a beautiful box of chocolates. Next to him stood a boy, about four or five years old, who strongly resembled Alex. Veronica? She nodded with a smile. But deep down, a wave of dissatisfaction rose within her, seeing that this handsome man had brought a child along on their first date. And in person, you're even more beautiful than in the photo. Veronica laughed. He was more pleasant than she had anticipated. Not reserved at all. Look at that open smile. Did I say something funny? He asked. I just thought the same thing about you, she replied. Oh, come on. Alex blushed, but it was clear that he appreciated the compliment. I, on the other hand, thought to myself, could such a beauty be the one for me? It can't be true. Turns out, it can. And this is for you, Alex said, handing Veronica the flowers and chocolates. Thank you, they're very beautiful flowers, and I'm sure the chocolates are delicious. They're tasty. I tried them, the child said, pronouncing the last word in a funny way. My apologies, I didn't introduce you. This is my son, Tyler. Tyler, this is Aunt Veronica. He's not nice, the child suddenly said. To say that Alex was shocked would be an understatement. His son's words caught him completely off guard, and for a moment, he was even scared. But Alex quickly composed himself and said, Veronica, please ignore him. The boy lost his mother, and now he compares every woman to her. It's all right, I understand she reassured him. Well, that's great, Alex concluded. By the way, would you like to switch to a more informal you? Great idea. Veronica really liked the city where her new acquaintance lived. However, this child. Honestly, Veronica would have preferred to spend time alone. Why drag a child along on a date with a woman? When she said she understood everything, she wasn't being deceitful at all. Veronica truly understood. Oh, the struggle she would have with this child. But then again, who was forcing her to marry a man with such a lively bonus package? There was even a moment when Veronica considered throwing this relationship out the window. However, thinking that beggars can't be choosers, she refrained from doing so. And the relationship began. She tried to weigh every word, recalling every piece of advice from her friend. She did her best to please Alex. But it seemed unnecessary because Alex was already enthralled by Veronica. Veronica's mother, upon hearing her daughter's story, shook her head. Oh, that's not good at all. The little guy saw right through you, she said. Mom? Veronica was indignant. She wasn't some sort of spy to be seen through. Well, what's wrong, Mom? Dealing with children is clearly not your strong suit. If your own son heard a couple of kind words from you even a few times in six years, that would be good. And for your stepson from your first marriage, it's even less likely to happen. She's supporting her daughter, you see. And she's a mother too. I was expecting different words from you, Veronica snapped. But, you see, I'm telling you as your mother. If you want a family, tame your character. And furthermore, whether you take offense or not, men aren't exactly lining up for you. You're not a young girl anymore. 
Alex unexpectedly took his son's words to heart out of the mouth of babes as they say the truth is spoken. Children and dogs, they're the best barometers of a person's soul. Although comparing a child to a dog isn't quite fair, but mostly it's true. And Alex decided to share his concerns with his mother. I don't know, Alex, what to say. It may be true, but I can't judge. I don't know this woman. If you brought her to meet me, then I could say something Mrs. Adelaide sighed. But what if you don't like Veronica either? Well, it's all in God's hands, his mother shrugged. But I don't think introducing a woman to a child right away was a good idea. What if things don't work out between you? Are you planning to introduce every woman to Tyler as a priority? Just imagine how the child feels. And if Veronica was unhappy and Tyler sensed that, he might have drawn that conclusion. Damn, I didn't even think about that. Alex slapped himself on the forehead. I thought it was a good idea. Well, what can we say now? It's too late to cry over spilled milk. Bring her to us. We'll get acquainted. And then we'll deal with the problems as they come. Interestingly, when Veronica went to meet Alex's family, she felt nervous like a schoolgirl. No, she wasn't afraid. But to deny that Veronica was nervous would be foolish. However, along with the nerves, there was a firm belief that if Alex was truly her man, Veronica would feel it. So, it must be meant to be. The purpose and reasons behind it, well, that's a different question altogether. The anxieties turned out to be justified. Alexei's mother, Mrs. Adelaide, seemed to penetrate Veronica with her gaze, as if with X-ray vision. She spoke, possibly as a future daughter-in-law, and tried to be friendly, but her eyes were drilling into her. By now, Veronica definitely knew that during the three years of being a widow, Alex had made several, albeit feeble, attempts to create a new family. However, both potential brides and Veronica herself were deterred by the child. Some were simply bothered by him. Others were afraid of the responsibility and ran away, and some were not accepted by Tyler. Veronica mentally acknowledged that she belonged to the third category, although the first two also applied. And suddenly, a question was asked directly. Veronica, does the child not bother you? No, not at all. I have a child myself. Where there's one, there's room for another. The boys are almost the same age, so I think they'll become friends. God willing, Mrs. Adelaide said thoughtfully, continuing to scrutinize Veronica's face intently. But Veronica's expression revealed nothing. What's it called? It seems like a poker face, Mrs. Adelaide thought. But overall, it seems fake. Clearly, she just wants to get married so as not to remain alone. Well, as long as Alex is happy. And Tyler accepted her. They might not become kindred spirits with Alex, but, as they say, take what you're given. Veronica spent almost the entire day with them. Veronica, will you be staying overnight at Alex's? Mrs. Adelaide asked. Veronica and Alex exchanged glances. Well, I was actually planning to go home, Veronica replied. Well, it's just that Mr. Jackson and I could keep Tyler with us, and you could have some alone time. Are you trying to keep everything secret, like teenagers or secret lovers? Alex blushed, but composed himself and said, Veronica, maybe you should stay after all. Well, why not? Very well. Mrs. Marina said when her daughter called her and said she would only be back tomorrow. Alex and Veronica spent the entire evening walking and riding on the slide. And when they returned home, they cooked a late dinner together. And then there was a passionate night. The next morning, Alex asked, Veronica, would you like us to be together? Yes, she smiled. And a week later, there was a meeting with Veronica's parents. When the future relatives left for the city, Mrs. Marina said, you'd be a fool to let go of such a man. And what do you think of Veronica? Alex asked his mother. Are you really interested in my opinion? She asked, surprised. Yes, of course, otherwise I wouldn't have asked, he replied. Well, then, here it is, our boy desperately needs a mother. But I'm afraid this lady won't become Tyler's mother. There's clearly some personal interest there. What interest? I'm not an oligarch, not an influential person. What interest could there be? Well, I don't know what I don't know. Maybe she wants to move from the village to the city and find a more advantageous position there, but I won't accuse her. Time will tell. You didn't like Veronica, did you? Well, the main thing is that you like her, his mother evasively answered. Alex understood that he wouldn't get a more detailed answer to his question, 
but there was more than just that troubling him. Why do you think Veronica won't become Tyler's mother? Taking a deep breath, Mrs. Adelaide replied, I didn't tell you, but on the day you first met Veronica, Tyler came into the room, hugged me, and started crying. He said that the lady wasn't nice and he didn't want her. Why did he decide that Veronica isn't nice? Alex exclaimed. She didn't say anything bad to him. Well, I don't know. Just remember, you're not only responsible to yourself for your choice, but also to your son. Mom, what are you talking about? Yes, I fully understand my responsibility to Tyler for my choice. And my son's opinion is very important to me. But I repeat, Veronica hasn't done anything bad to Tyler. I want to be with Veronica. I sincerely hope that everything will work out. But Mrs. Adelaide looked at her son with doubt. And two months later, the wedding took place. More precisely, the newlyweds quietly got married. And a steady family life began. Which could be described as it happens and it could be worse. Veronica moved to the city to live with her husband and insisted subtly that he include her and Kevin, her son, on the apartment lease. Kevin is starting school this year, and without being registered, there could be problems. According to Veronica's wishes, they changed the entire setup of the apartment. When Alex first heard about it, his heart tightened. Maria's sketches furnished the apartment. But in the end, Alex thought, well, maybe she's right. He needed to let go of the past and bid it farewell forever. Veronica's words twisted in his mind. I'm not into doll-like old-fashioned coziness. Tyler vehemently rejected Veronica, and it can't be said that she particularly suffered. She treated Tyler with indifference, ignoring his tantrums. Veronica spoke arrogantly to everyone. Alex was puzzled. Where did that charming woman he fell in love with go? It got to the point where he didn't want to come home. The only positive aspect was the friendship between Tyler and Kevin, just as Alex had predicted. The boys had a lot in common. They were both cheerful, kind, and enjoyed computers, but in moderation. Football, which Alex taught them. And he also instilled in them a love for biking and swimming pools. Both of his sons, yes, that's exactly how he saw them. Adored chips, chocolate candies, and vanilla ice cream. Alex never ceased to thank the Lord for sending him this boy. Kevin is cool, Tyler would say, and Alex agreed with his son. To be honest, at first, Alex was afraid that Kevin wouldn't accept him like Tyler didn't accept Veronica. But that wasn't the case at all. The boy immediately loved his stepfather, and the most wonderful relationship imaginable developed between them, as if someone up above had planned and arranged it all in advance. No matter what happened between Alex and Veronica in their two years of married life, he regarded Kevin as his own son. This is my child, my eldest son, he proudly told his friends and relatives. Now, Veronica was perpetually dissatisfied with everything. You would think she should live and be happy. Alex accepted her son, provided for the boy, and raised him as his own. He had opened his auto repair shop, and now the business was slowly, but steadily bringing in significant money. Veronica herself worked as an operator at a sushi delivery service, but mostly because she didn't want to stay at home. Maybe Veronica is jealous of me with her son, he thought at some point. But that would be silly. Well, tell her about it, Mrs. Adelaide shrugged. Although, in my opinion, she's selfish, you're Veronica. But Alex still decided to talk to his wife. Nonsense, it's all in your imagination. No, Veronica, it's not just in my imagination. Alex decided to follow through. I don't dare insist that you must absolutely love Tyler, but you could be kinder to him. The child needs a motherly touch. After all, he practically grew up without a mother. And our child doesn't need affection? Did it not occur to you that it's all about hormones? Veronica asked, her voice trembling. Wait, what other hormones? How clueless you are. We're having a baby, our own. Alex was simply overjoyed. And when, as a joke predicted by their friend Anna, their adorable daughter, Julie, was born. He bought all the most luxurious roses that could be found in the city and showered the entire staff with gifts. The day they discharged Veronica and little Julia became a celebration for their family. Even Veronica seemed to thaw. She smiled contentedly and kissed everyone, even Tyler. Now, surely everything would be fine. But he had no idea how cruelly mistaken he was. If you love a man, you will love his children too, scolded Mrs. Marina, her daughter. 
and you should perceive all members of your family as a whole, together in no other way. Why are you taking it out on the poor child? Alex has accepted Kevin as his own, and what are you doing? It's all so complicated, Veronica sighed pretentiously, but you can't fool Mrs. Marina. Clearly, she wants something from me, the mother realized, but she continued, there will be difficulties. Well, they happen even with one's own children. But you also need to think about how to improve your relationship. After all, you knew who you were marrying. I've already figured it out. Well, Mom, it seems like I have postpartum depression. I think I should go on a resort vacation now to relax. What? What resort? And what about Julia? She's still a tiny baby. Well, I thought about it. Maybe I'll bring the baby to you? Veronica asked in a fawning tone. Forget about it. Did you even talk to Alex about this? No, I didn't. It became clear to Mrs. Marina. Her daughter hoped to gain her support and then confront her husband with the fact. A cunning move, but Veronica was in for disappointment. And don't even bother telling me, because you shouldn't count on me. Look at what you came up with. Well, what if I talk to Alex? Veronica persisted. Go ahead, Mrs. Marina replied indifferently. However, Alex showed a determination that was not characteristic of him before. No, darling. You gave birth. Now take care of the baby. I need to earn money, he decisively replied. The rest of the day, Veronica simmered with anger towards Alex. And the next day, the boys came home from school. Veronica, after putting Julie to sleep, fed them a light lunch. The mood was as bad as it could be, and the boys knew better than to provoke her in such moments. But you never know when a bomb can explode unexpectedly. Tyler reached for another stuffed pancake, and Veronica, who had been glowering at her stepson, hissed. Stop eating, you little monster. It's easier to kill you than to feed you. Tyler looked at his stepmother in fear and instinctively put the pancake back. His lips trembled, and Veronica was pleased to realize that the boy was about to cry. You little brat, you've ruined my life. She was coming up with ways to hurt her stepson even more. But what her own son said shocked Veronica. And how has he ruined your life, Mom? Aren't you ashamed to say such things? We came to their house, not the other way around. I know that Dad didn't let you go on vacation, so you're throwing a fit. Veronica looked at Kevin. When did he grow up and learn to understand adult things? After all, Kevin was only nine years old. You ungrateful snake, she screamed. Yes. You're just as rotten as your real father. I have one father's the one we live with now. I don't know who you're talking about. Do you even know that yourself? You brat. Who are you to judge your mother? Veronica shouted and slapped her son hard. Don't you dare raise your hand to Kevin again. Alex said sternly. He had just come home from work and witnessed the final act of the scene. Kevin stood up from the table and ran to the balcony, and Tyler followed his stepbrother. You idiot. Scum. Alex muttered. How could I have been so deceived? He sat down at the table and covered his head with his hands. Yes, who needed you and your brood? Veronica continued screaming. Quiet, you'll wake up Julia. I don't care. Yes, I've already realized and somehow I'm not surprised. You've never cared about anyone your whole life, Alex said wearily and went to comfort his daughter, who was indeed whimpering. The rest of the evening passed in silence. The boys retreated to their room and talked about something for a long time. Alex absent-mindedly clicked the remote, switching channels, and when the evening smoothly transitioned into night, he fell asleep next to the television. In the morning, he woke up to his daughter's frantic crying. The little girl cried for about five minutes and Alex grumbled as he headed towards the bedroom. What kind of mother doesn't hear her child crying? Upon entering the bedroom, he gasped. Veronica was gone. After calming his daughter down as best as he could, Alex returned to the living room. His smartphone buzzed. The message stated that $40,000 in cash had been withdrawn from his credit card. No matter how terrible Veronica may be, she's definitely not stupid, Alex cynically thought. She knows that I'll track her down to every place she makes purchases. Yes, I'll expose her and bring her back in disgrace. No doubt she went off to a resort. But do we really need to look for her? It's calmer without her. Once the money runs out, she'll come back on her own, Kevin snorted. Alex was admiring this boy right now. Soon enough, 
The grieving mother slapped him and Kevin didn't want to give her the satisfaction of seeing her son's tears. And now, though it must have hurt him terribly, he voiced an unpleasant truth. To be honest, Alex thought the same. When the boys explained what caused the conflict, he felt disgusted. However, Mrs. Adelaide took this story to heart. The elderly woman had suffered a stroke and Mr. Jackson was taking care of his wife. The next day, as luck would have it, Alex had to go to a countryside restaurant for business negotiations. Besides, he needed to decide who to leave Julia with. Maybe we can go to Grandma Marina's? Kevin suggested. Alex really didn't want to tell his mother-in-law about what had happened, but there was no other choice, so they packed their things and headed to the village. Well, you scoundrel. She talked to me about the resort, of course. I'll take care of Julia and watch the boys. What's there to discuss? Two months passed. Mrs. Marina moved in with her son-in-law. She cooked, took care of her granddaughter, and with the help of Kevin and Tyler, took care of the household chores. One evening, as they were enjoying a delicious dinner and watching TV, the doorbell rang. I'll get it, Kevin said. Veronica was standing at the doorstep. Kevin, she exclaimed and tried to hug her son. But the boy recoiled and ran into his room. I don't want to see her. See who? Alex asked, confused, as he stepped into the hallway. Alex, we need to talk. Well, come in then. The spouses secluded themselves in the bedroom and the conversation began. It turned out that Veronica had met a very wealthy man at the resort. According to her, the affluent admirer was proposing marriage to Veronica. And what about the children? Alex frowned. Of course, I'm taking Kevin and Julia with me. Who do you think I am? She retorted. Dad, don't send me away. Kevin burst into the bedroom. And don't send away Julia. I'll behave well and get straight A's. I'll do everything at home. Just don't send us away. All right. Alex chuckled. Eavesdropping is not nice. But we'll talk about it later. Go out for now. Your mom and I haven't finished discussing everything. She's not my mom the boy exclaimed, but he eventually left the room. Well, any more questions? Alex looked at Veronica. Yes, I'll drag you through the courts, she declared. And indeed, she tried to regain custody of the children through legal means. However, it didn't work out and the children remained with their father. Alex was confident that deep down, she wasn't too upset. She put on a good face despite the bad game. She wanted to show her new suitor that she was a good woman. It was fortunate that he was present in court and didn't see or hear anything. Perhaps he was the one who would finally satisfy all of Veronica's desires. Veronica's mother, Mrs. Marina, came to see Alex after the court hearing. Alex, I need to talk to you, she said. He could see that the woman was completely distraught. So he invited her to the kitchen and closed the door tightly. Something told him that it was better for the children not to hear their conversation. Mrs. Marina burst into tears immediately. What happened? Alex was genuinely alarmed. He had a good relationship with his mother-in-law and sincerely sympathized with her knowing that such a good woman had a wayward daughter. Alex, I've come to ask for forgiveness. I knew from the very beginning that Veronica wouldn't change. She remained the same as she always was. I knew, and I kept silent, hoping for something. I've come to ask for forgiveness for having a daughter like her and to ask you not to deprive me of communication with my grandchildren. I love them with all my heart. All three of them are my family. Oh, how sorry Alex felt for this woman. Why did she blame herself for everything? What are you saying, Mrs. Marina? Yes, I'll be happy if you don't turn away from us. And the children love you. We'll always be glad to see you in our home, and we'll come visit you ourselves. I promise. The boys rushed into the kitchen. They heard their grandmother's voice and nearly knocked her off her chair as they came at her from both sides. She hugged them back, stroked their backs, and the boys couldn't understand why their grandmother was crying so much. Soon enough, Alex got married. It turns out that being a single father was not such an undesirable option after all. His secretary, Eliza, became Alex's chosen one. In her youth, she had gotten rid of an unwanted pregnancy and now felt like she was paying for it. Eliza was afraid that Alex wouldn't be able to love her because of it, and the heroic father, in turn, was afraid that Eliza would be repelled by such a significant dowry. But the girl was only happy. Eliza believed that she would never have a child. 
And now, all of a sudden, there were two of them. And six months after the wedding, Eliza became pregnant. Our family is growing, Alex proudly proclaimed. It was so pleasant to gather around the big table with a warm company, Alex and Eliza, her parents and brother, Mrs. Adelaide, who had recovered from a stroke, much to the joy of her family. Mr. Jackson, Mrs. Marina, Sister Anna, her husband, son Ashley, and daughter Catherine. And of course, Kevin, Tyler, and Julia. The continuation of the family and Alex's hope. 